Hi guys, I'm EVM. Welcome back to the channel. And it's that time again. Now, I want to basically tell you why an EV-based YouTube channel is about to do a video on missing the petrol engine when it eventually does disappear. And I don't think anybody could possibly argue that in the next few decades, who knows how long, the petrol engine for personal transportation will no longer be a thing. For me, it's going to become a guilty pleasure. Something which people know isn't really good for them, but ultimately you're going to miss. You're going to occasionally get that kind of craving for one, like you do a chocolate cake. I mean, let's face it, a chocolate cake has no real nutritional value. It's not really food, but people still eat them, even though they're not good for them. And that, for me, is what a petrol engine car, anyway, is going to eventually turn into. And this is why, ultimately, I will miss it when they do go. And I think a lot of people out there will as well. Before the Green Brigade jump in the comment section and say, whoa, whoa, whoa what you, what, are, are you as an EV advocate, of something I, of which I have never called myself, by the way, uh, why are you saying that a petrol engine is a good thing? I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying we should prolong it. I'm not saying we should do anything other than push the rollout of EVs. I'm saying that as purely as a guilty pleasure, the petrol engine is something I will miss as will a lot of people out there. And let me give you a, a, a good analogy, which I think kind of sums it all up for me and is the way the petrol engine is going. And that is, the petrol engine is gonna turn into a horse. Yep, I said horse. Hmm. Now, what I mean by that is that as a form of transportation, certainly in the UK anyway, decades and decades ago, it disappeared. People don't use it to get around any longer, but people still ride horses. I mean, ecologically speaking, they were a complete and total menace when they were at their height in city centres, at least. Just Google it. I mean, there was basically horse crap all over the city. It was a genuine concern for the politicians at the time. Kind of like petrol engines are now. There's a definite mirror in there. But it does highlight the sort of similarity between where a petrol engine will eventually end up. I think we will get to that stage. Look, we're off. I guess wasps like beer. <laughs> Leave me alone! And my beer. It was, it's... Oh, brilliant. Someone started to cut their garden just as I start doing this video. Perfect timing. Okay, half the neighbourhood has decided to cut their garden, so I think I'll go inside because I've no idea what impact this will have on the audio and there's nothing people like more than complaining about the audio of a YouTube channel. Oh, God, this will have to do. <laughs> Yet more proof that I never plan my videos out. Who would have thought that on a bank holiday Monday people would be out mowing their lawns? <laughs> okay, what was I saying? Right, the uh, horse petrol engine analogy. Basically, that for me is the way the petrol engine will end up. It's not there, of course, in the de decades before we do. But ultimately, there's no real reason to have a horse for transportation. Uh, there's no real reason ecologically to have one over something else. It's basically a guilty pleasure for a human being to ride a horse. And again, I'm not having to go at horse riders. I'm not comparing them to petrol cars by saying that they're equally as bad because they're clearly not. But what I'm saying is people only do it because it's fun. I mean, I live near two different steam railways, both of which are very, very busy. They're immensely inefficient, the steam engines. I think it's something like one or two percent efficient or something like that. But people want to ride them. Why? Because they're more fun, perhaps? A bit of nostalgia going on there, of course. But ultimately, it gives you something which modern trains don't. And that is what I'm saying about the petrol engine. It's giving you something which an electric motor doesn't. There is the noise, of course, which I, for one, enjoy. I am a, you know, a petrol head, if you like, as well as an electric car fan. Um, some people will get that. Some people don't miss the noise at all. If you're like my wife, for example, who just views a car as a tool, as a thing to get from A to B, then fine. You, you, this this probably won't interest you at all. But ultimately, I will miss the noise of a petrol engine. I will miss the interaction of gears. Even in semi-autonomous kind of paddles, you still have an interaction there with the machine. You decide, or you can decide, when to change down a gear. If you're on a track day or something like that, it can be very important to, to get it just right. It's a, a sense of achievement, if you like. When, you, when you're when you driving and you just do something and hit the sweet spot, something you don't need to do with the much more efficient, much better electric motor. But efficiency isn't everything, is it? I've used this analogy before, but 
let's face it, nobody wants to have efficient sex, do they? Don't worry, love, I'll have it done in 15 seconds. Another great analogy, I guess, would be the vinyl record. A digital download is probably technically superior in almost every way, but anyone who's a, an audiophile who really likes their music will probably want to listen to their music on vinyl record, or at least their favourite music. I mean, you can take millions and millions of songs with you on your phone, and it's clearly better and superior and more convenient than, than a vinyl record that you can take with you, and it's big and bulky, and then you have to do that to get it to play. But ultimately, people have a connection with this. There's something emotional there. It sounds more organic. It just sounds more natural. And I guess that's similar to the petrol engine compared to the EV. It's one of those things, isn't it, that I suppose that the human condition likes things that aren't good for you. When it becomes a, a, you know, just a pure kind of fun item, like a classic car is now, or a horse, or a steam engine if you've got one of those in your garden, I think that uh, you know, people will see it as a nostalgic thing and won't kind of hate on it as much. Right now, we need to ditch the petrol engine once a suitable alternative for everyone obviously is around, um, for obvious reasons. It is clearly something which needs to be replaced. It's done its job, it's changed the world, but now it's, it's on its way out. This video isn't about that. It's basically saying, I'm going to miss it when it goes. And I'd like to know if you would as well. But before we get to that, let me show you the video that I filmed several weeks ago. And it was, for me anyway, an immense day. I had a lot of fun. Now the car I've chosen to kind of get my point across in this video is the £107,000 BMW 850i with a 4.4 litre V8. And it's a convertible. What better car to try and highlight why I will miss a petrol engine. Not sure how much you can hear because, oh, because of course it's a convertible, but oh, it just. I've never driven a proper convertible before. This might be windy for you, but you know what? I don't care. Look at this. <laughs> the BMW 850i. Amazing! Oh my god! I am a petrol head and I like electric cars. You can like them both, they're not mutually exclusive. And when you've got an 850i, a car that costs near 100 grand or something like that, oh my god, this is a treat. Sport mode, sport mode! Oh look, it's a de-restricted sign. just adds to it this was full electric this wasn't be as wide <laughs> even though this is an automatic I can still use the paddles to, to change down to decide when I want the car to drop down or change up a gear and that's something you've kind of robbed of in an EV so it kind of takes a little bit away from the driver that kind of driver involvement and it's that sort of thing that I'm I'm on about now oh a de-restricted area again <laughs> oh, that, that blip of noise deciding to drop down at the right point it's like you've done it yourself with an EV it's probably quicker to point and shoot But you don't feel like you've done it yourself. Now you can get that out of an electric car, of course, probably quicker. But the noise for a petrol head, it's, it's the added theatre of it all. <laughs> and the convertible really helps. This is amazing. I've never driven a proper convertible for any length of time before. And now I, I want one. I really want one. For the three days out of the year in the UK that it would make sense to have one. Right now I'm driving around the houses. This is where the EV is better. No noise. That sounds beautiful to me, but they're just probably getting annoyed. So I guess it's 
what are you doing with your car at that time? If you're having fun on a beautiful day, country lanes, sun's out, you want that noise, I think. You want that driver involvement of changing the gears yourself. Oh, that. Um, but when you're just going to work, when you're commuting, you don't want any of that. You want the quietness. <laughs> I'm sorry. You want the quietness and the ease of use of, of the EV, of course. So, oh. sorry. I genuinely think, though, for the petrol head, certainly, that the petrol engine will be will be missed by a lot of people, and I'll be one of them. Today, it won't be missed at all because it's under my right foot. Yeah, that was a good day. That was a very good day for me. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, as I said in the video, if we are two identical 850s, one electric, one petrol, I mean, you know, like identical in every way from speed to handling, I would have had more fun in the petrol engine version, especially in the convertible because of the noise, because of the interaction of the gearing and things like that. You know, I feel like I've got more part of the of, of the of the whole process. I'm, I'm involved in driving it instead of just pressing the pedal and going. Yes, the electric motored version would have been immense fun, but I think the petrol engine just had that little bit extra. Noise being the biggest difference. I mean, again, I use this analogy all the time, but imagine watching a film at the cinema, uh, Avengers Endgame, that's a relatively recent film. Imagine going to watch that. You think, right, I'm really looking forward to this. I'm at the cinema with a massive screen. Loads of people here to watch it with me. And you listen to it on tiny little speakers. It just wouldn't be the same, would it? You want the floor to shake when something explodes. Because it's all part of the, the theatre, the emotion behind it. And I think that is something which you're missing. And I'm not sure it could ever be replaced, really, in an EV. Don't get me wrong, when I'm driving to work, commuting, going to the shops, basically doing all the boring driving. I want to be in my EV. It's more efficient, it's cheaper on fuel, it's easier to drive. Why would you not want that? But on the nine, well, the one out of a hundred drives that you do, where you're on a really brilliant road in the country with a nice weather, I think you'd want to be in a petrol engine over an electric motor. Yeah, especially if you don't have to worry about cost or anything like that. It's a pure guilty pleasure. Yes, it's on its way out. Accept that. If you're a petrol head, you know, it, it's going to happen, I'm afraid. But there's nothing wrong with people saying, I've gone to EV, and I'm sure there's many people out there. I'm now in an EV, and for 99 out of 100 journeys, I prefer being in the EV. But just sometimes, I want to be packing my petrol engine. I miss it. I have to move in because of the... What are you looking for? I need my iPad. Okay, okay. Do you want to say hello to the folks as you get your iPad? Okay. Hi. When we eventually get rid of the uh, petrol engine, yeah, and it's it's just all electric, will you miss the you know the the, the the petrol engine? Will you miss that at all? I would miss the noise. Like you miss the noise? Yeah, because sometimes That's good. I just don't like <laughs> quiet cars because most electric cars are silent. So you'll miss the noise, basically, is what you're saying. Yeah. A little bit, yeah. Mm. Well, there we go. Out of the mouths of babes, I guess. <laughs> like, again, a vegetarian giving up meat and missing meat. Nothing wrong with that. Mm. There's nothing wrong with someone giving up the petrol engine and missing that either. I still have a petrol engine car. I have an EV as well, of course. I have for nearly five years now. And the massive lion's share of our miles is done in the EV. Because that is clearly the future. And it's cheaper. So do you agree with me? Do you sometimes want... A bacon sandwich with maple syrup and pancakes over muesli well this is kind of the same thing there's nothing wrong with having something that's not good for you occasionally in moderation of course and i believe that is where we'll end up with the petrol engine it will become something that gets trotted out in summer on a sunday it'll become the sunday driver thing like the classic car is now i suppose i'm talking about a good petrol engine now let me be clear about it. i'm not about every petrol engine i'm on about a good one not a one litre corsa not certainly i noticed i've never mentioned the word diesel i would never consider that a good engine but ultimately if you have a nice engine in a nice car <laughs> thank you then uh, then there's nothing wrong with missing that do you agree i mean do you think we'll get to the horse analogy stage where you visit somewhere just to occasionally take out a petrol engine car <laughs> like a steam engine like a train 
I think a petrol engine car and an identical electric motored car, there is a difference. I think the petrol engine one is more involved and more fun because you have something that the electric motor doesn't. A noise, a theatre to it, and more involvement in getting the most out of it. You feel like you've achieved something, whereas an electric motor, it's like, it's like playing an Xbox or a PlayStation game. You just press a button and you go forward very fast. It kind of removes a bit of the uh, skill involved, I guess. Right, uh, well, I'm going to go out and finish this. I'm going to have a nice bank holiday. Hope you have as well. Um, so, yeah, please do comment. Please do subscribe. And uh, let me know what you think. I'm on Twitter, at EVManUK. So if you do want to chat, that's probably the best place to do it. Um, and as usual, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.